Today, we will talk about the thermometers and the temperatures used in aviation. But first, let's look at why temperature is important in aviation. Knowing the current air temperature is essential for the performance calculations of the different phases of flight, from takeoff to landing, as it greatly affects the air density. Temperature is also useful in determining the icing conditions, which is very important since ice formation has negative effects on the aerodynamic and performance characteristics of the aircraft, such as increased drag, reduced lift, increased weight, among others. And finally, the temperature is also used to make the altitude and airspeed corrections, thus obtaining the true airspeed and true altitude. Now that we understand the importance of knowing the temperature in aviation, let's take a closer look at the instrument used to measure it, which is the thermometer. There are two main types of thermometers used on aircraft. There is the bimetallic thermometer, also known as the direct reading thermometer. And the other is the total air temperature probe, also known as the remote treating thermometer. Let's start with the bimetallic thermometer. The operation of this type of thermometer is based on the difference in the coefficient of thermal expansion between two metals. To understand how it works, let's take a look at the following example. Here we have two metal strips, one is made of inver and the other one is made of brass. These metals have different coefficients of thermal expansion, in this case inver has a low coefficient of expansion, while brass has a high coefficient of expansion. This implies that when heated, the brass strip will expand more than the inverse strip. So for example, here we have two strips with the same length at a low temperature. If the temperature increases, then the brass strip will expand much more than the inverse strip, since it has a higher expansion coefficient. Now, in practice, these strips are welded together, so that as the brass expands more than the inver, the whole piece will bend like this. This way, the strip is drawn out into a helix inside a metal case, where one end is anchored to the structure and the other end is attached to the needle. With this design, temperature changes will cause movements of the bimetallic helix, which in turn will move the needle to point the current temperature. Now, since the tube with the bimetallic helix must be exposed to the free airflow, it will also be exposed to sunlight. Therefore the tube has a special reflective coating that prevents solar radiation from affecting the temperature measurement. This type of thermometer is located in the cockpit so that the tube is exposed to the outside airflow and the dial is on the inside. That's why it is also known as the direct reading thermometer. Normally, the dial includes the Fahrenheit and Celsius scales, and the temperature indicated by this type of thermometer is known as the outside air temperature, which we will discuss a little later. Having seen the principle of operation of the bimetallic thermometer, let's move on to the total air temperature probe. This is a type of electric thermometer, which is mainly used in aircraft that fly at high speeds, and it consists of an air inlet that protrudes from the side of the fuselage as we can see in this images. In this design, the probe inlet protrudes far enough to keep it away from the aircraft boundary layer. Since due to friction, the temperature value changes within that layer. And the objective is to measure the free airflow temperature. Let's take a closer look at how this probe works. Inside we have the sensing element, which consists of an electrical resistance cable with high thermal conductivity. This means that the electrical resistance varies with temperature, and therefore it can be easily measured. The temperature measured is transmitted via an electrical connection to the instruments and other systems. Here, the air would enter through the intake, where part of it would continue along, and the rest would pass around the sensitive element, and then exit through the air outlets. This design allows for a constant flow of air through the sensor as well as prevents water or dirt from accumulating inside the probe. Apart from this, the structure also has bleed holes, which prevent excess pressure from building up inside the probe. Now, since this probe protrudes from the fuselage, it is susceptible to ice formation. That's why it is equipped with a heater to prevent icing. In this case, the probe itself compensates the temperature measurement automatically when using the heater, with a margin of error of 1 degrees Celsius. We have already seen how the total air temperature probe works, let's now look at the different types of temperatures and terms used in aviation. 
Let's start with the static air temperature, abbreviated as SAT. When stationary on the ground, the air temperature has a single value, and it is known as static air temperature. Now, another expression used to refer to this temperature is outside air temperature, which is abbreviated as OAT. This will be the temperature indicated by the thermometer when the aircraft is on the ground. However, during flight, there are certain effects that tend to increase the temperature locally. Let's look at them. The first one is the friction. And it is that when flying at high speeds, the friction between the air and the fuselage increases considerably, which causes a local increase in air temperature. The other effect is the compression. At high speeds, the air particles impacting the aircraft are abruptly slowed down and compressed. In this case, kinetic energy is transformed into heat energy through a process, known as adiabatic heating, which causes a local increase in air temperature. Taking these two effects into account, we can now look at the definition of total air temperature, which is abbreviated as TAT. This term is used because the increase in local air temperature due to friction and compression causes the thermometer to indicate a value higher than the actual static air temperature. Therefore the value indicated by the thermometer in these cases is known as total air temperature. So in other words, if we take the actual static air temperature and we add the temperature increase due to friction and compression, we obtain the total air temperature. And on the other hand, if we take the total air temperature and we subtract this temperature increase, we obtain the static air temperature. But now the question is, how do we calculate this temperature increase due to friction and compression? Well, as we already mentioned, this temperature increase, also known as ram rise, is directly related to the aircraft's true airspeed, which results in a graph like this. As we can see here, the static air temperature remains constant with airspeed, while the total air temperature increases due to friction and compression. This way, thermodynamic models allow predicting the ram rise for a given true airspeed. This means that knowing the true airspeed and the static air temperature, the total air temperature can be calculated. And in the same way, knowing the true airspeed and the total air temperature, the static air temperature can be calculated. This can be done by means of an approximate formula. A flight computer that incorporates that functionality are automatically in real time with an air data computer, which in addition to calculating these temperature values, also calculates other important parameters such as the ISA deviation. Now, we have to mention that it is important for the flight crew to know both the static and total air temperatures, as they are used for different purposes. For example, total air temperature is used to determine icing conditions, while the static air temperature is used in performance calculations, as well as for the airspeed and altitude correction. I hope the information presented in this video was useful, if so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.